What's up, witches? It's coffee hour with me and Crazy Pie Wacket behind me. <laughs> and it's also unboxing hour. Um, I got another gift deck. I'm so excited. <laughs> they just keep showing up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Say hi, Pie. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. Please don't shred my back. <laughs> okay. All right. He just fell down behind my butt. He'll be up soon. So other kin to row. This came in uh, the mail yesterday. Happy morning coffee, by the way. Um, so it's November 2nd. And we have snow. Yeah. So um, I think my post on Facebook was, so begins the never-ending Christmas. Um, but to wake up to it, I mean, it's beautiful. There's no doubt about it. So, unboxing the other kin to row by Sciola Thompson. This deck comes to me from viewer Rose True. Thank you so much, Rose. What a, just a delightful little gift. Um, Rose is one of my loyal viewers. We have nice little conversations. Includes a 78 card deck and a 288 page full color guidebook. I hadn't heard of this tarot and it might have been Rose that told me about it. Um, I can't remember. Somebody on a thing said, have you seen other kin? And I had never heard of it. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm gunky this morning. I am still uh, throwing off all the sugar and the wheat and I feel like sluggish and sweaty and all that kind of stuff today. So back to keto and we'll brighten up. Discover a world both strange and familiar, both other and kin. From the creator of the best-selling Line Strider Tarot, I remember uh, viewer mentioning that one too, uh, comes a deck filled with marvelous beings who inhabit the liminal space between myth and fact, human and animal. I like that word, liminal. Liminal means on the edge, you know, that space between uh, one state and another. A lion with the body of a man sits on the emperor's throne. A sagacious owl acts as hierophant, and frogs and foxes take on human garb. This Rider Waite Smith based deck and companion book brings Tarot's deep symbolism into new light through fanciful illustrations, originally created with hand ground natural pigments on handmade paper. Suitable for beginners or advanced practitioners, the other kin Tarot wants to travel and be left out in the moonlight. It's a deck that improves with every use. So what a concept, grinding your own pigments. Talk about magic. We've got a ribbon. We've got the, the snappy magnet box and a ribbon opening. Okay. And you know, I realize I never read the back of the actual book. 2019 is the copy right here. Let me see if it's the same as what's on the front. No, it's not. Let's read that too. Journey through a world of familiarity and strangeness where selkies cavort and mermaids and foxes and frogs wear human garb. Other kin to rows full of incredible fusions and delightful adventure. Based on the Rider Waite Smith system, the deck is an easy entry to tarot for beginners or for the and for the more experienced, it reads with gentle humor and a trickster edge. Nice. This gorgeous full color companion book explores not just the traditional meaning of each card, but also its archetypal underpinnings. Meeting the other kin reveals the incredible attention to detail found in both the major and minor arcana. And it includes keywords and reverse meanings, as both illustrator and writer Ciolo Thompson provides unique insight into these amazing cards and shows you how they will improve with every use. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. <clears throat> and this is Llewellyn. Full color, full color, glossy, lovely, lovely book. And I love that they're telling us in the beginning that it's going to go very deep, that there's great attention to detail. So they've set up an expectation here. Cheers. Oh, God, there's nothing better than hot coffee on a chilly fall morning. All right. So as you can see, I have not actually looked at this deck. Time to get out the, the deck opening wand and try to do it without damaging anything. Oh my god. 
See, this is why I don't do this part on camera. Because it's a battle. Got it. <laughs> All right. Where'd you go, Pie Pie? Oh, goodness. See, he has the run of the house now, so <clears throat> I may have to persuade him. Here are the backs. And we see kind of a Rorschach mirror image thing of, we see birds and wolf and stag. Lovely. And the images very delicate line drawings kind of vulnerable with pops of color there's the fool okay so we've got the essence of the fool he's stepping off the cliff he's got his little kit bag the breeze is blowing him and the puppy's barking at his feet the magician oh oh my so my son was telling me <coughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Good grief. My son was telling me about um, other kind that, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with like the furry community, but there's the other kind community, other kin, who, um, who acknowledge that uh, they've had past lives that were not human. And in the Hindu tradition, in the uh, Tibetan Buddhist tradition, regular Buddhist tradition as well, um, there is transmigration of soul. So it is possible to be um, reincarnated as every level of life, whether that's, I'm putting some more charcoal on here because the one that I lit is clearly going to be gone by the time we get there. Um, so this is memories of past lives as other kin, as another kind of being. <clears throat> I thought I'd put that in there. Here's the magician. She's lovely. So we have the infinity, but we don't see representations of all of the elements. There's the wand for air, but we don't see the other ones the high priestess. So right away they've set up a lot of expectation about detail and there's not a great amount of detail. There's a great delicacy. There's the empress. Oh no, that's the high priestess. Ah, I was thinking this was the magician, the high priestess. That's the magician. This is the high priestess holding a lobster. Then we have our first other kind, other kin bear mother, bear-breasted bear mother. <clears throat> the emperor is the lion. The hierophant is the owl. Sitting on a stack of books, there's the, you know, the hand gesture. The lovers are, who are the lovers? The lovers are froggies and half froggies. The chariot. A mermaid being pulled by fish. Strength. So there's a swan riding on the lion. Wow. The hermit is a hare. The Wheel of Fortune. So we have the Hebrew letters in the Rota, Orta, you know, that whole thing. And birds. Justice with the scales tipping and a wren. <coughs> God, I've got such gunk. The Hanged Man is, looks like it's a dog or a wolf or a coyote. Temperance. So the color is sparing, but it's just kind of thrilling me to think that these pigments have been hand ground and hand created for this deck. And when I reviewed um, 
the mystical cat's tarot yesterday. I swear I saw something in there as well about the artist doing like magical inks. So that's really interesting. I'm going to have to look that up now. The devil. Got her kind of head down with a... That's a confusing image. I don't know. Oh, okay. So we have like a fawn. So we do have the fawn thing. The legs are a little odd. Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on there. The tower. So we have a burning tower rather than a stone crashing tower. The star is a hawk, a raptor, the moon, the sun, what a bunny, judgment, judgment it looks like bear as well. There's an egg, And a horn and a bear. The world is a hare. There's the four fixed signs. <clears throat> and now we go into the suits. All right. Ace of Cups. The two. Three is otters. It's got to be otters. Yes. The four is an octopus. The five, a fish-headed woman. So have we seen any males in this deck so far? I mean, that could be. Um, you know, the only thing that's calling my attention to it here is I've seen a lot of breasts so far, but I haven't seen, don't know that I've actually seen any males, six of cups, any male, overtly male beings, seven. Interesting that we've had an octopus at a four and a seven, but not at the eight. <laughs> so you're not going for the obvious. The eight of cups is, what's on your hair, darling? What's on your hair? All right, something green. I think I see, okay, I see little seals here. So that could be the selkie. The nine. We just watched Song of the Sea on Samhain. It's the best Samhain movie ever. Nine of Cups. It's about a selkie. And he's got honey. And the ten of cups. Seahorses. Then we have the page. The night with, I guess, a bubblehead charm. <laughs> the queen and the king is an octopus. Then we have the ace of wands. What's that? A pangolin, I think. The two, a froggy on a globe. The three. So we're into kind of the lizardy realm with wands here. Deserty realm, I should say. Four of wands. There's a frog. Five. Um, apparently just reptiles and amphibians. Six is a, or a chameleon with laurels. I like it. Seven. So the victory card there, a chameleon with laurels. So again, I'm not seeing like the, the you know, the great detail that was promised. You, one would expect a lot of smaller images and, and, you know, symbols. Seven of wands. The eight is not a rap, a reptile or an amphibian. Suddenly we have uh, greyhounds looks like. Certainly, we have greyhounds. Back to frogs for the nine. And the ten is, I don't know, a wombat? Is that a wombat? Is that a squirrel? It's not a wombat because of the tail. But the vase looks like a wombat. I've got any Aussies. Tell me if you agree. No, I think that's a squirrel. 
Then we have the page back to amphibians. The knight is, looks like a pouncing fox or a coyote. The queen is a cat and the king is a tiger. If you hear conversation in the background, my family's in the hallway having a conversation. All right. It's getting bright. And that means we get screen stripes, so I apologize for that. Ace of Swords. So here's a Kirker Dur Dur Dur. <clears throat> Two of Swords. Ooh, that's perfect. Head in the sand. Three. Oh, dear. The Four of Swords is, I mean, that does look like an owl. So we're going with birds for swords so far. Come on, do the thing. There we go. Then we have the Five, which is chickens. There we go. Thank you. The Six. Light gets tricky, riding a swan. And there's cats. There's a cat riding on a swan. We have a toucan for the seven. The thief card, the eight. There's another blindfold. Look at that. Blindfold, like with the mouth open, and there's berries right there that they can't see. That's, that's very interesting. That's a good image. Nine of swords. Oh. Duck and cover. The ten is arrows and a peacock. Aw. Page. What's he holding? Oh, a letter. He's holding a letter. Ah, there's a little detail with some information in it, huh? The knight, the queen, and the king is a pelican. And now we have the pentacles. And there's a fox. The two is a, a look like what? A marmoset? A little lemur? Three is bees. The four is an monkey. What's going on out there? <laughs> Five of pentacles. Hold on, guys. Sorry, guys, I'm back. There's hubbub going on because I fucked up in the bathroom. <laughs> I take my water bottle and I, I put it up under the, the faucet. It kind of, you know, parks at a tip. And um, I usually stand there until it's full. But this time I walked away and when it filled up, it pushed water up through the thing and then down under the cupboard. So there's been a hubbub because there's a shit ton of water underneath my sink and my husband and son are fixing it so that's what's going on back there i have been a disaster with this mercury slowing down you know from the from the whole batch of butternut soup hitting the floor to um just being incredibly clumsy i'm i'm yeah it's been bad <laughs> so my husband is cleaning up my messes as he does so here's the five of pentacles out in the cold let's see where were we well we had a monkey we had a greedy monkey for four and then we have a little mouse on crutches for the five of pentacles the six is more mices seven what is that it looks like a little foxy half foxy Seven of Pentacles mean harvest. I mean, he's got a little rake. The eight. He's got tools. The nine. Oh, we have a bird. <clears throat> we have a bare-breasted woman with a bird head. And the ten. Oh, foxes. Lots of foxes. Foxes, and is that a... What's the thing on the left? Is that a hare? Is that a... Hard to tell. Page of Pentacles, the knight on a turtle, the queen, and the king. Well, they're sweet. They're very sweet cards. And by the way, Piwacket is in the hallway watching everything that's going on. 
Let's find out how they shuffle. Perfectly. Thank you, Llewellyn. All right. Ancestors and allies, guides and guardians, come on in. Come on in and take off your skin and rattle around in your bones. How's that for a Samhain invocation? <laughs> Speaking of other kin, you see my son's tail right there? He's got his fox thing on. So there's his tail. <laughs> now... I offer you fire of Azrael and fresh water, and actually, I offer you hot coffee as well. And I offer you hot coffee. Take a breath with me for a second, you guys. It's a big day tomorrow. Tomorrow is election day. So let's pause for a minute. Breathe. Have some coffee. Take good care of yourself. You know, starting now. Radical self-care, everybody. Okay, I'm getting kind of a secret delight here because even though my husband would not have, like, yelled at me for doing that, he can't because I'm on camera. So he's got to be extra nice. <laughs> Like I said, he wouldn't have yelled at me anyway. He would have just said, well, listen, next time don't, you know. But he did tell me that he's going to, you know, bust my kneecaps if I do it again. So. <laughs> okay, let's go to the book. Again, full color glossy. It's a beautiful, beautiful, <clears throat> beautifully packaged, beautifully presented deck. So we have uh, chapter one. There's an introduction. Chapter one is reading the cards, short chapter. Then we have a chapter on the major arcana, and then chapter three is the minors. And under each of the um, suits, there's a little phrase. The suit of cups we move upon the waters. The suit of wands of spark, flame, and ember. The suit of swords through air on wings of reason. And suit of pentacles from earth and gold. That's lovely. Okay. Welcome to the other kin. Here you will find a world that is both strange and familiar, both other and kin. We've probably read that. Something like that. Okay. <clears throat> each of the 78 cards in this unique deck feature a being who inhabits... Okay. Each of the 78 cards features a being... But they've put that clause in this unique deck and they've made the verb agree with in this unique deck. Um, and even 78 cards feature. Each of the 78 cards feature. But it's the each, not the 78 cards. So you could say the 78 cards feature or each of the cards features. Oh, God, grammar. <clears throat> okay, grammar, police, Mercury and Virgo. Whoop, whoop. All right. Um, a lion with the body of the man sits on the emperor's throne. Selkies cavort with mermaids. Frogs and foxes take on human garb in a sagacious owl axis. Hierophant. We read something like that before. So let's keep going. Using signifiers. A significator is a single card selected that represents the querent in their present state or the specific aspirations the querent may have. This card is used to center a reading and request specific information. So you can use a significator for um, the kind of question you're asking. Like if you're asking about a new creative venture, you could use the Ace of Wands as a significator. Um, if you're asking about a particular person, you can use the court cards as significators or, you know, find your court card that's your significator. Um, I find as far as picking a significator, I would rather see that card come up in the reading as a validation. Um, so a lot of times if I'm asking a very specific question, I will tell my deck what I want to see. If I'm doing like a nine card and I'm asking this question and it's like, if this is blah, 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 show me this card show me this. So that's one way you can use significators too in just programming your deck to um, here's what I need to see if it's going to be, you know, thus and so. Okay. 
For example, a teacher may choose the Hierophant or an artist may immediately gravitate towards the Queen of Cups. Placing this in a central position can help the querent connect more strongly to the deck. Exaltation of Aces. Exalting an ace is a practice that treats the aces as overall themes or mood signifiers. This is interesting. I've never heard of this. If you pull cards for a layout and discover an ace on reveal, move it to the side and pull a new card to replace the ace. Now note the way in which the reading is flavored by the ace. An ace of pentacles will steer the reading toward the physical, material, or financial. The ace of swords will speak of the mind, clarity, and the realm of ideas. An ace of wands addresses action, creativity, and movement. The ace of cups will turn our attention to relationships, intuition, and spirituality. The specificity of this may help you be more prepared and able to deal with emerging challenges. Certainly, um, <clears throat> I like the idea of replacing the ace. But certainly aces are strong significators when they show up um you know, one shows up in a reading, it's there's a new beginning. If two or more show up, then it's really something. And if I get all four aces, like in a full tableau Wheel of Fortune reading, the beginning has already started. Um, I also find it interesting when I have a reading that has like lots of nines and tens and aces, it says that there's still something that's wrapping up and culminating, but the new beginning has already started. Same deal if you've got a reading where everything is mid-numbers you know, threes, fours, fives. It just says you're right smack in the middle of it. So I'm, I'm interested that she's brought up this uh, numerical um, idea here. Tower trumps all. The tower is a powerful card, arguably the strongest in the deck. Interesting. Some readers believe that the tower always exists in present tense and that regardless of where it shows up in a reading, the querent should prepare for implications in their current situation. If the tower manifests in the past position, indicating a major life change in the past, for example, the loss of a loved one or an early success that altered your path, that tower moment will always be with you, even though it is behind you now. Yeah, the moment when life changed. I talk about um, certain cards that come up and the tower is one of them. The judgment card is one of them. There's, you know, so many cards in the major arcana are cards of change. I'll shoot a video just on that. Um, but I will talk about, you know, this is going to be a, a dividing line where in, in your future, when you look back, you're going to say this is the time when everything changed. That's the reference point. Okay, every aspect of your life has been affected by the tower's major change or upheaval. When you see a tower in a future position, you can be certain that big changes are underway, like a tidal wave that's miles out to sea but gradually roaring, rolling toward shore. Be it past, present, or future, you can seldom avoid the effects of this card, but can generally rely on the cards around the tower to offer clues about the aspects of your life most affected by this kind of big life event. Pentacles may indicate the fallout as financial. Cups indicate relationships that are at risk. There are many ways you can prepare for the tower if you see it coming and ways to deal with the damage from past tower events. Reversed reading. You can read the reverses. They're entirely optional. Throwing the cards. A few card layouts. So we have a three card. Past, present, future. Context, focus, outcome. I also like situation, action, outcome. Five card spread is present, potential, okay, the question, the present, the potential, past, present, future, like that. I think we'll go for the five card spread for you, Rose. And now we see the full, all right, so there's a color image of the card. There are keywords, idealism, adventures, innocence, decisions, spontaneity, risk-taking, naivete, open-mindedness. And then we just have a full description here. So she goes into the full description and then at the end in reverse. So there's, it's, it's broken down into keywords, but it's not like chunked down. So there's a lot of information. All right. Then let's look back to the minors. Here we have the Ace of Cups. The suit of cups we move upon the water. So there's a section that describes the suit. And then same thing, keywords and just a big... Uh, section of writing with the section of reverse kind of separated off sometimes not always okay and then at the back 
when we get to the end of the Pentacles. There's my my little note from Rose. Sending her peace and blessings, which I send back to you at least threefold. All right. So I'm going to read uh, the conclusion at the end here. The creation of the other Kin Tarot deck was a labor of love, and I hope it comes across with each card. Thank you for allowing my work to be a small part of your journey. May it help you along the way or at least provide some entertainment. Okay, we're a tribe. I appreciate you. Happy reading, all that. Let's get on to the reading. Come on, Rose. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So this in particular, I am asking for reading specifically for Rose True, my dear gifter and viewer. How... Uh, well, I'm just going to throw it open. What is the message you have for her today? They're telling me they don't want to be shuffled that way anymore. They're telling me go. <laughs> Not even cut. They're telling me go. Um, okay, that's the way we go. So we have... I want to see the order that we lay them out in because I don't think they said. Na, 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 na. Okay. I generally favor putting a card above the central. Okay, easy layout. It's a little more fleshed out than the three card. The number of ways you can arrange, though I generally favor putting a card for the present or even a significator card in the central position and setting the cards up in the shape of a cross. So we get to decide. I'm going to go um, present and then we're going to go up down, left, right. Okay. She doesn't give you the order. We're going to scoot that back a little bit. All right. Let's look at the situation in the present. We have the lover's card here for you, Rose. So we're talking about attraction and <clears throat> what you are attracting to you right now. Partnership, friendship, attraction, unification, communication, contacts. So the lover's card says that you are um, in receive mode, that things are coming to you and you're in, in the mode of drawing to you, attracting to you what it is that you need. The lover's card embodies ideal partnerships, deep communication, and the significant bonds we form with others. Many people interpret this card as romantic, and it certainly has that aspect, but it's also emblematic of other kinds of relationships in which there's a high degree of mutual respect, trust, and commitment. These are the bonds and commitments that enable our progress and help us reach our goals. The lovers pictured here are holding an egg, a symbol of new life, new ideas, and the fruit that these deep, sincere relationships tend to produce. When we are fully committed to a partnership, we are channeling the energy of the lovers. That kind of commitment can be a powerful tool in our personal journey. In business work and financial readings, this card urges us to find our place not just within a business or industry, but within a system that is profoundly aligned to our own values and beliefs. And I'm reading this whole one for this first card, so you can get an idea of the writing of this deck, but I will not read this whole thing for every single one. Um, okay. Uh, whether you love animals, state parks, or speculative fiction, let your passion be your guide. This card can also indicate strong professional partnerships. Okay, so this is where your love attracts to you. So whether we're talking um, relationship here, attracting a relationship, attracting a new passion to a relationship, or attracting the things that you want to you, it's all centered in love and passion. It's all centered in the things that you love. So for you, Rose, it's talking about really generating that sense of love around your life, whether it is directed at a specific person or just generally in your life. That is what attracts to you. There is nothing more attractive. You've heard me say this before. <clears throat> there is nothing more attractive. My, there goes my husband taking the trash down and Pi is blocking his way. Pi whack it. Bye bye. He ain't doing it. Anyway, um, there is nothing more attractive from the outside than someone who is passionately engaged in their life and in love with their life and in love with themselves. There's nothing more attractive. So that attraction principle. Now let's go for um, 
I guess let's go in the order we put them down. The highest, what's above, let me see what they, how they describe that position again. Potential. <clears throat> above is the card representing the potential or the potential outcome. Okay, Queen of Swords. Okay, and uh, by the way, the, the court cards are just in line with the suits. The keywords are fairness, good judgment, intelligence, independence, insight, and reliability. So intelligent, analytical, trustworthy, clear-minded, not clouded by sentiment. Stern can be critical, judgmental, and harsh, but she's a great ally, a natural leader. <laughs> you would want in your crew during a zombie apocalypse. It's like Scorpios. I want Scorpios around during a crisis. Um, struggles with compassion and can be very critical, but it's hard to suffer fools when you're as smart as she is. All right. In professional reading, keen intellect, critical abilities are most in demand. So we're talking about being centered in what you love and your passion, but then bringing your critical mind to it to really bring um, things to fruition. You've got to bring your intelligence, your copious intelligence and your great ideas and your clear mindedness and your discernment and your critical thinking. Okay. So we're not going to get all caught up in just the love and the fun of the thing to take it to its potential we're going to be very discerning and um, think it out and have a plan all right the one down below is the question um favorite putting a card and setting the cards above to the left the bottom is what I call the question it can also be seen as the card that helps examine your motivations I wish that she put these more in order you know I think I'm going to have to go through this particular reading because I like the categories but in a way that um, you know maybe reading the question card is a good thing in the beginning here's the foundation of it and then the potential but we'll see okay see how it all shakes out we have <clears throat> the page of wands another court down here so the question of the foundation or the motivation new ideas motivation energy youth loyalty so the foundation is that I've got ideas I've got ideas and I need to get them out. So um, this is kind of the raw energy of creativity and inspiration. And then we kind of fall in love with the idea. And then we've got to make a plan and decide this part will work. That part won't work. List making, plan making, storyboarding, you know, whatever it is to flesh out your idea and make it workable. All right. And I splash coffee all over the place. I have a drinking problem. Okay, the past influences the right is the future elements or where the situation is heading. Past influences. We have the Eight of Swords. <clears throat> so past influences were times when we didn't think this was for us. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I had the resources. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I'd finish. Okay. Restrictions, self-deception, denial, negative thinking, isolation. Shows a blindfolded bird with his foot stuck in a net. Ooh, I missed the net. He cries out, agonized in panic, though the net is barely touching his foot and the blindfold is only loosely covering his eyes. This card's message is of feeling trapped, limited, and unable to see a way out. You may be refusing to see how your actions are creating or exacerbating, exacerbating problematic situations. All right. But this is in the past. So this is saying, how were you in denial in the past? Okay. In financial and business. So I like that she separates. She talks about kind of in general, personally, and then she goes down in work, financial and business dealings. So I like that she does that can indicate problems that are causing limitations or impeding your growth. There is a way forward. So in the past, <clears throat> you have shortchanged yourself. Either you've had an illusion about um, how good your idea was, you've discounted it, you haven't um, counted in resources and skills that you have. Um, so a lot of self-limiting 
beliefs in the past. Now let's see where things are going in the future. Knight of Swords. We've got a lot of swords here. And you know, I really wanted to cut shuffle them, but they told me stop. So here we go. Strength, intelligence, keenness, lack of compassion, judgment, conflict. So here both times we've got that vibe of the court cards of swords not being emotional, being intellectual rather than emotional. But if we're talking about business dealings and we're talking about ideas and bringing something to fruition, that can be a very good thing that we're not getting caught up in emotions and, and instead we're being very clear minded about what's going on. The Knight of Swords. Oh boy. This is the most intelligent and perhaps harshest of the horsemen of the horseman should be horsemen. We have grammar issues here. He has vision, strength, and an intellectual approach to the world. Full of new energy and the ability to lead this card can be a fantastic omen for folks heading into difficult situations or leadership roles. This night urges you not to let emotion cloud your vision. Keep your goals in clear sight and drive relentlessly toward victory. That said, you risk alienating everyone if you, open, if you operate entirely without compassion toward others. Focus on facts, numbers, and your aspirations, but try not to run roughshod over the hearts and ideas of others. Apt for this night, he rides a raptor steed. The energy here is of the hawk or falcon who keenly surveys the land and sweeps in from above to snatch their prey. Merciless, focused, intelligent, this is the knight of swords. Remember that the tarot always urges balance, so don't forget to take care of yourself and others on your path to world domination, or it will be a mighty lonely throne on which you sit. In work, professional, and financial matters, the Knight of Swords represents the qualities of lo loyalty, focus, and integrity. Sometimes you have to be the detail-oriented person who calls out the mistakes of others, like the grammar mistakes here, or the voice of reason that anchors an overly idealistic team. You must be careful with your tone and delivery when pointing out mistakes or sharing opinions with others. That's really an important point. Really an important point, because we don't, I mean, how many of you um, have seen a video of you or heard you just kind of candidly talking and suddenly it's like, oh my God, I sound like that really? It's very difficult um, for us to hear our own voice and the tone of our own voice. And we don't know how it sounds to others. So it's really important, I think, to try to listen with outside ears to the tone that's coming out of your mouth and think about how might this be interpreted. And what you're going to hear is your, your rising sign. So even though me, Sunny Leo, with soft underbelly of Pisces moon, thinking I'm being sweet and nice and, you know, mousy, with Scorpio rising and Pluto on the midheaven, it is not how other people receive me. So it was a, it was a grand day when I really realized how sharp I am and how pointed I can be in my speech. So, um, wow. So look at this. This is the Knight of Swords. We've got this whole thing. Um, so you've fallen in love with the Knight of, with the Knight of Swords. I've offered my condolences. He's irresistible. So it's understandable. So pure energy Knight of Swords can actually talk about being swept off your feet. So romance. Um, and then there's the reverse. So I would say coming up in the future, it's just saying that you've got this head of steam now going forward, whether this is relationship or this is a project, you've got this head of steam. I mean, we have three swords and a wand. So it is, it is creative. It is mostly intellectual, but it is about attracting the result to you, whether that result is romance, a, a rekindling of romance or this project, the result of project. So going forward, um, I mean, we, we definitely need to have a plan together to bring it to its potential. We need to let go of the self-limiting ideas from the past. Fortunately, they're showing up in the past and then moving forward, um, we can just ride the motivation. I mean, Knight of Swords is go, 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 but go um, keeping ears open for other people's feelings, for their input, and trying to be as compassionate and tender with them as you can while you are full steam ahead galloping forward on this project. All right.
So there you go, Rose. This is a long reading. I'm looking at my time here and it's 26 and then I'm realizing that I interrupted the video and I have two videos. So, but you know, my gift decks tend to be a little bit longer because I want to give you all the time, you know. I so appreciate you. If you'd like to get a reading, you can send me a deck down below. I will keep rearranging my bookshelf so I can fit them all. <laughs> you can also send me a donation, which I really appreciate. I rely on your donations to keep this work going. And, ah! And also, would you consider joining my Patreon? Um... There are more things to come. I actually have to revise my levels because um, I have more that I'm going to offer to my um, first exclusive level, which is the priestess level. Initiate level is $3 a month. Gives you access to me. Over on my Discord, you will also get access to some private channels on Discord. Um, and priestess level, you are going to get exclusive content like quarter calls written out, like the quarter calls that I did for the Samhain ritual. Um, I will write those out and deliver them to you so you can use them yourself in your own rituals. I am going to be making, be making exclusive um, um, recordings of chants and music for your ritual. And so please consider joining Patreon. And at the highest level, which is the goddess level, you get a personal reading by me every month, one-on-one. -on -one. I think that's worth it. And what else can you do? You can join my Discord. Um, you can like and subscribe. Like the video so more people can see what I'm doing here. I really appreciate you being here. It's a beautiful day. Um, <clears throat> please take care of yourself today and tomorrow as we head into this election. I am putting out the best vibes that I can for radical self-care. Um, stay safe in the meantime, everybody. You know, the pandemic is ramping up. Stay safe. Wear your masks. Hunker down. Winter is here. Obviously, we got snow out there. So we have the best excuse ever to stay at home and bake bread and do all the things that we did in the spring. But now we got skills. So I will see you tomorrow for another unboxing. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, until then, this is the Zen Witch. Blessed be everybody. <laughs>